Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Steve Martin from Ripple Training, and it's my pleasure to introduce Alexis Van Herkman, colorist, filmmaker, author, and uh, Resolve user. user. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we've heard a lot about Resolve. Resolve is the granddaddy of uh, color grading systems, and uh, it's been used in all these features. In your uh, estimation, why, why Resolve? Why would I be interested in learning it? What's, if you can put it in a nutshell. In a nutshell, Resolve is a dedicated uh, color correction environment. Um, mm -hmm. That is what it does. And for 30 years, I believe, Da Vinci has been working on color correction, color processing, image processing technology. So not only is the underlying technology excellent, their color science is phenomenal, um, but their workflow is heavily driven by users, has been driven by expert users, the greatest colorists around the world for decades. Excellent. So it has a long pedigree of just doing what you want, when you want it, quickly. And I, and I imagine you can work really fast in it too. I you mean. can work really fast. Bit of a learning curve, not as much as people are afraid of. I mean, anyone who undertook to learn Apple Color, this will not look alien. Excellent. Um, so yeah. Well, why don't you give us a quick uh, tour? Quickie Remember, tour, quickie, quickie tour. tour. Well, I'm gonna start out here on the config page. Um, it's an application of pages. Uh, again, for the Apple Color users out there, these pages are analogous to the rooms right. you found in Color. But primary room, secondary room, well, Gemma. not quite though. Right. Not quite. It's it's a different organization of functionality, just in a somewhat similar way. So this config page where we're at now, this is dull as watching paint dry. It's your project management. It's your project settings, you can set up LUTs, um, different up preferences, yeah. all of that yeah. stuff here. I'm gonna get out of this room because this is not particularly interesting, but it is the first thing but you see. But it's very important because it sets up things like your frame rate, exactly. your project size, exactly. I mean, your, there's a very important page. Very important page, but once you've got things set up, it's not like you're gonna be spending a lot of time here. Moving on to the browse page. Now I already have a project loaded up. The media pool is where all of the media used by the current project lives. So DaVinci needs to know, oh, all the media is there in that directory. Exactly, and, and this is key because for a lot of people this is a little confusing. Why do I need a media pool when I've got over here in the conform page, I've got a timeline. Sure. This doesn't make any sense. But key to the way Resolve sees the world is that it is a database-driven environment. So. The advantage of that is that it keeps its media separate from the project data. So you, as you bring in additional projects, you can have those new edits, those newly reorganized projects use the same, same media, media pool. and right. grades that you make, depending on how you set them up, go with the clips. So if I bring in a new timeline, all that does is reorganize the order of the clips. The grades go along with it's them. Still accessing that same media pool. Exactly. It's, it's a very way of working, robust very efficient. Yeah. way of working. Exactly. So the conform page is where you bring in project data. Um, as we'll see in the next little segment, you can actually bring in XML and the media pool gets populated automatically. So if you're an XML user or an AAC uh, user, no problem just bring your project in, populates the media pool. But if you want to pursue more exotic workflows, you can. Excellent. Um, so the conform page, once you've brought your project in, you've got a timeline, you can do some simple editing if you want, I can unlock the tracks. None of this is gonna be particularly foreign. You've got snapping, you can move clips around, you've got trimming tools, all of that stuff. So um, it's, it's a finish, you can do finishing. You second. can do finishing, it's designed for finishing style tasks, okay. right? So right. I've gotta replace some effects clips or I have to replace a placeholder for a stock footage clip with the finally purchased version, oh. that sort of thing. Right now, this is not necessarily an environment I would advocate anyone sit and edit in. Sure. In particular, there's no support for audio other than bringing in a reference audio mix track, which you can do. 
Um, so yes, this is much more about finishing. Uh, if I jump into the color page, ah, this, this is where you spend, is where this is the, the magic happens. Yeah, the magic. And this is the biggest difference between uh, color or uh, between DaVinci Resolve and Apple Color is everything happens in this page, right? So you don't go to a separate tab for secondaries. You don't go to a second tab for secondaries. It's all right here. And one of the things I love to point out right off the bat, because Resolve is a node-based environment, is that when you want to apply multiple adjustments, multiple corrections, you do that with multiple nodes here in the node graph. So I can add... Just a series, a node is a series of imaging processing operations exactly, applied. Exactly, exactly. Each node is essentially a collection of of every parameter in this room, right? Every parameter on really this easy page to manage. makes it really easy to manage. And it also means that, for example, let's say I decide to warm this clip up a little bit, drop the blacks. As you can see in the three-way color tab here, I've got my color balance controls, uh, lift, gamma, gain. Mm -hmm. Again, this will be totally comprehensible even to people who've been using color correction filters in their NLE. Right. Um, I've got contrast controls. I've got curves. Let's say I want to do a little bit of an S curve, create sharper contrast in the upper highlights. Um, I can do all of these things and it gets applied to, to the, the image selected in node. node one. Right. If I jump over to node two, now I can start doing things like either, uh, say I want to jump into hue versus sat, sample his face, because he's looking a little bit orange, and maybe I want to ease off that. Wow, right? look at give that, him, it's happening on a total separate Give him note. a little bit of a parchment paper look relative right. to everything else. And by keeping this operation separate, if I've got a picky client who wants to go, well, let me see it without it, let me see it with, I can go ahead and turn that node off and on. It makes it really And it makes it easy for me to easy. organize what I'm doing. So that's one way of using these multiple nodes. The other way of using these multiple nodes is by recognizing that all a secondary is, is a primary that's limited. I don't have to go into an alternate mode. Every single function in DaVinci Resolve can be used within a secondary operation. And all I have to do is say, jump into my windows, oh, create- Power window. Power window, create a circular window, feather that out. And now I can go to the outside of that window. And let's say what I want to do is I want to make everything on the outside even more orange. Uh-oh, I'm running out of oomph. I can do whatever I want using those windows. It's not like other environments where I go into a secondary mode and then I've got this handful of controls I can use, but these other ones I can't. Everything is accessible can be right limited. there, and what's exactly. nice is it's accessible vis-a-vis -vis the, the the node. Exactly, exactly. Node, so uh, when you're in the serial node, when, as it were. right? So when you're in the uh -huh. color page, all of your color correction happens there, but you manage your multiple layers of correction, if you will, via these nodes. And I could go on and on. There are all kinds of node structures that allow you to really aggressively manage the order of operations. You can steal information from one part of the tree, feed it to another. It verges on the compositing. Um, anyone who's used to Shake or Nuke is gonna look at this and go, wow, get... I can do some crazy stuff here, which is really, really nice. So that's the color page. The viewer basically gives me a larger image to do things like rotoscoping with if I want. It also lets me expose the tracking controls. Which are uh, pretty phenomenal. Very robust. It has one of the best trackers I've ever seen. And best by virtue of it's fast to use. You draw a window, you click a button. Um, a gallery interface for managing various stills. 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 If I jump back to the color page, you can see that I also have a stills tab there. If I want to go ahead and grab a still, I can load that up. Now, one thing I learned, one thing I learned from Alexis training that I found really powerful is that those stills are not just stills; they actually store grading information on them. They do, they do. In fact, if I right-click one of these stills, um, I can choose Display Node Graph, and I can actually see all I of the that's nodes really, that's inside. Really amazing. And that takes me to uh, another key point: why 
to consider resolve over, say, color correcting inside of your NLE is efficiency. Uh, this gallery interface right here is created in order to manage potentially multiple pages um, of stills, stills, all of which are saving grades, and the tools for copying grades, rippling grades, creating groups, all of that stuff are very robust. Right. So you don't have to labor over some NLE's torturous method for copying <laughs> filters. You can actually ripple your grades and do everything you want to do very, very quickly. It makes working on feature length projects incredibly approachable. Right. Once We're you about learn thousands the rules. Of shots. You're yeah. talking about potentially, you know, hundreds of shots across multiple reels yeah. or you know, say you get a reality show and you've got 1,200 shots you need to grade inside of one day, this makes that doable. Doing that in an LLE, you might have to say, well, could I have an extra day? <laughs> um, you know. And the fact is, you can do this with a free app. That's, that's still... Yeah, that's I mean, we're actually, everything yeah. we're seeing here is using Resolve Lite, the that's freely amazing. downloadable version. That's amazing. Um, just to finish up the, the quick look, I've got the format page and that has input transforms which lets me do things like pan and scan uh, my images. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do pan, tilt, zoom, rotate. It's referred to as PTZR. Uh, I also can go forward. I have deck control. So if I want to capture from a deck, if I want to bring in uh, an EDL, I can actually go ahead and capture using device wow. control right within here. So if I happen to be using an NLE that say doesn't have device control, I can use Resolve uh, to manage that workflow. I can also output to tape from Resolve. And if I have a robust enough machine, uh, say one with multiple GPUs, uh, I can do what they refer to as power mastering. And what power mastering is, is basically saying, go ahead and shoot everything out to tape real time without rendering. Nice. So you have to have the processing power to do what you need to do. If you need to cache certain operations, like overlapping transitions, things like that, you can. So maybe you need pretty to... Pretty much hardware driven. Yeah, pretty much hardware driven. Um, but you have that capability from within Resolve. Um, and then over here, there's a scene detection page, which we didn't even go into. That, but... that, that's, you just go to that, my website. <laughs> there's, a little, there's, a little, uh, there's a little movie on there. You can see what this does. It's scene pretty, detection it's, is fantastic. It's, pretty it's fantastic. In fact, it's so nice when I have spot, cust uh, spot clients. I just have them bring in the 30-second spot. Yeah. You know, Usually, that's cuts only. And I just break it up using scene detection. And it's fast. It's faster than, frankly, loading an XML. It's, it's pretty neat. So. So yeah, that's, that's the overview. Um, again, there's just so much depth to this application. And it's funny, when you get used to it, you go, well, you know, it's not that deep. But then I start showing it to someone new, and they say, I know, the head starts to explode. My God. No, it's, 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 it's pretty neat. Yeah. So Alexis uh, just finished producing a training on DaVinci Resolve, seven hours called DaVinci Resolve Core Training, where he goes through all of this and way more. It comes with the media, and I highly recommend uh, you download it, you get purchase the tutorial, because uh, you'll walk away going, wow, um, I can use this app, and this is going to really make a huge difference in my workflow. So Alexis, thanks for joining us on Mac Break. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio.